had quite a number um, uh, uh, phone in and email in with uh, apologies uh, because of um, un unwell. There seems to be something going around. Um, so um, if we've barely got a quorum here at the moment, um, seven, which is our quorum, uh, if someone is wanting to leave the room, the meeting will have to uh, adjourn until they return. Thank you. So, uh, welcome. Um, and uh, firstly, I'd, I'd mention that um, I'm the deputy chair of this um, uh, CCO committee. And, of course, uh, Councillor Josh, the chair, is one of the absentees today. So um, um, bear with me. Um, I haven't really caught up um, too deeply on the, on the agenda, but um, I will do my best. OK, thank you. Um, first item on the agenda, the uh, Karakia. I'll ask Councillor Ross to read that. Thank you. Um, out of respect, I am learning Tereo. I won't be reading it in uh, today um, until I feel I can do it justice and the respect that it deserves. So I'll Thank do you. it in English for this morning. Thank you. I acknowledge great things above, the sky, universe and the heavens. I acknowledge, greet those things below, the earth in all its entirety. Cast all negativity to the distant horizons. Cover us with the cloak of affection and love as a treasure bestowed upon us so we may enter into enlightenment let it be bound and fixed. Yes, fixed. Let it be agreed by all. Thank you, Ross. First item on the agenda is the apologies. Now, they will be listed on the screen, will they? <laughs> the Council accepts the apologies of Councillors Josh Tandle and Mackay, Kate Joblin, Charlotte Melcher, and Charlie Anderson, and grants leave of absence for this meeting. I presume that Councillor Jenny is not necessary to be there? She's already been okay. leave Thank you. Move. Moved by Councillor Helen, seconded by Councillor Glenda. Those in favour, please say aye, against, carried. Thank you. Are there any... Oh, the leave of ab absence is on the agenda. Is there a resolution to pass? No. OK, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest, please? No declarations of interest. Thank you. Are there any late items or additional information? None that we've received. Okay, thank you. First item on the agenda is the confirmation of the minutes. Moved Councillor Peter, seconded Deputy Mayor Helen. Uh, are there any uh, matters arising from those minutes? If not, I'll move from the Chair that the minutes are accepted, uh, that the minutes of the Council Controlled Organisation Committee meeting held on the 23rd of May 2023 are confirmed as a true and correct record. Oh, we've already... Got a mover and a seconder. Okay, those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank you. First, I, next item on the agenda is the um, reports to the committee, the Wangari and, and Partners. So, um, welcome, um, Jonathan? Jonathan and Gail. Yes, I breeze there. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Just take mine for now. Thank you, Linda. Start again. Tonight, great councillors. Uh, very pleased to be here today to, uh, uh, to give Wanganui and Partners CCO update report. I think it appropriate to start with uh, governance matters, and I'd like to update you on some of the happenings around the governance and changes at Wanganui and Partners. Firstly, uh, many of you will know that Pahia has tendered his resignation as a director and, and a, accordingly chair of Wanganui Partners, and this will become um, to fruition on the 14th of September at the next Wanganui Partners board meeting. Um, I'd like to uh, say that Pahia was originally appointed back in 2015, um, and then when the change to the organisational structure came in 2016, I believe, he was reappointed to that new structure. Um, he has, of course, then served two three-year terms, and at the beginning of this year, uh, we had had a discussion as directors and agreed that if he could stay on a bit longer, in terms of the changes that were in place, that would be a good thing to keep continuity and organisational knowledge close to the organisation as we made the changes. And Council uh, put through a special minute and allowed that to happen, so he was reappointed again as a director and then appointed as chair. What has happened subsequently is Pahi has been fortunate uh, to be appointed as the chair of the Māori Fisheries Commission, which is a great honour. Uh, for him and for Whanganui to have him there and uh, as he said I've been deputy chair and that was enough of a burden to carry but that with chair I'm going to be struggling under the weight of the responsibilities that I have of the responsibilities that I have and I need to back off from this organisation. Needless to say the directors are uh, um, feeling a bit bereft about this because he has been a significant uh, important person for Wanganui Partners, its direction, its changes and shepherding through many of those things that have happened since he was first appointed. Uh, at our directors meeting on the 14th of September we will uh, review and appoint a new chair and as, as is uh, required under your, uh, your own policy for council um, controlled organisations and director appointments and of course under the Companies Act that's uh, what we're required to do. So we, we will do that. Uh, in addition, um, of course, that leaves a gap for a director on the board of Organ and Partners, and that responsibility, of course, sits with the shareholders of the company, being Organ District Council. I may just say that um, in your consideration of who that might be, it would be really good um, to think about next, uh, this next appointment as being someone who is locally based. Um, at the present time, we have three directors that are out of Whanganui based. Uh, that does place a burden on the three that are left here in town. It places a financial burden on the organisation as well. And it makes it difficult for us sometimes to have a quorum uh, um, online, even though Zoom is the magical answer these days, it's still it's still difficult. Uh, so I, I'd leave you with those uh, comments about that part of governance. I'd like to update you also on the appointment of the chief executive, as you all know. Also, that Hannah has chosen to resign and, in fact, not go to another job, but become a full-time mother to her two young girls. And while we think that's um, admirable and we're supportive of her and we think that uh, she's made a good choice in terms of her personal life, it is a big loss to Wanganui Partners and to Wanganui. So I'm hoping one day that 
that young woman who's got miles of talent will come back somewhere into Whanganui and be able to contribute her, her vast talents to us again. In terms of the process, we've got uh, two processes running, not side by side, but one after the other. We have an internal process, and that's acknowledgement of the comprehensive and experience of our staff and whether they should have uh, first run at the, at the role. That is underway right now, and the uh, interviews will take place on Thursday of this week, Thursday afternoon of this week. If it is agreed that we haven't reached uh, the threshold of experience uh, that we need, we will then uh, step into the external process, and we've got a timeline on that as well. And that timeline takes us to uh, hopefully being able to appoint, um, I think it's by the end of September at the very latest. Uh, we would have appointed a, a chief executive. So that's an update from me on the, those uh, covenants matters. What we're really here for, of course, is also to present the statement of service performance for the financial year 2022-24, and to give a very quick update, as we're only really one month, into the reporting for the 2023-2024 statement of intent. So I'll hand over now to Jonathan, who is going to run you through. I know you've all seen the report, but he's going to pick out the highlights for you. Thanks, Gail, and Cure everyone. Great to be here to provide you with this quarterly update. Uh, as Gail touched on within your papers, you have the uh, statement of service performance for 22-23, um, so a comprehensive uh, rundown of all the work activity and what was achieved in the year. To lift out particular highlights, I think it's worth reflecting on the fact that this was the first full year of Wanganui Partners as a council-controlled organisation, so um, important to note that point. In the year, we received significant national exposure for Wanganui, really notable um, marketing metrics that came through. We continued our support in improving NEETS outcomes, uh, the introduction of Mayor's Task Force for Jobs, supporting WADET, and also continuation of our existing commitment to 100% suite, which I know is really important to, um, to Wanganui and to councillors in particular. We enhanced event funding, which was supported by funding that we received through MB, and that helped get our existing established events through what was a really difficult period with COVID. There was the acceleration of the back house, and just as a reminder, that project was initiated through a partnership between Whanganui and Partners and Yukol Tipukanga as the founding partners. And it was great within the year to bring on board our three iwi partners for the trust to be formed and a C to be appointed to carry that forward operationally. We developed and supported a number of key business cluster groups and we're starting to see some of the benefits and that come to fruition. We created a new Amplify Fund, which was designed to support business growth for small businesses. We're often hearing there's a barrier for our small businesses to get ahead, and that's been designed to really get them forwards. There's been a significant re-entry from being at a complete standstill back into international education initiatives, and this is going to accelerate in 23-24, and you've probably yourselves been already seeing examples of that in recent weeks and months. And of course, the development of our UNESCO City of Design designation went from a launch and an announcement and started to flow into some real tangible outcomes within the year. So I just wanted to lift out some highlights there. Um, as per being a, a council-controlled organisation, we are now working through an audit, an annual report process, and obviously when we have that complete, we'll be for providing that to Whanganui District Council. I want to also lift out, um, as Gail mentioned, we're, we're only a month into the new year, so haven't brought to this meeting, um, I guess, performance versus KPIs for, for the year because we're, we're only a matter of weeks in. Um, but just to reiterate that we had these new impact indicators, we have developed new systems and reporting and CRM systems to support that and to monitor that. Um, we have, as key themes, developed an explicit commitment to the Māori economy and Māori business, and we've started to work on that. We have really streamlined and focused and condensed our work on four surge sectors. Um, and yeah, we're starting to see these new measures on satisfaction with our work and real impact of our work in terms of re revenue to businesses following our support, staff numbers, etc., starting to come through, although admittedly at a relatively low level at this point, but we will provide you, provide you with a comprehensive update at the next uh, CCO meeting. 
just want to reiterate um, that there's a number of key initiatives that maybe we don't bring to the table every single time, but we continue to support them. So that's our support for the back house, 100% suite, being part of the regional business partners network, managing the UNESCO City of Design designation, being the regional tourism tourism organization, being the regional film office, supporting events, a substantial amount of work, and we think it's um, uh, activity that we're very successful and strong in doing. And some highlights of work that we're right in right now um, that I think I just want to just lift up for you is the development of a workforce development plan. This is designed to recommend options for the future of tertiary education in Whanganui. Um, so a draft of that has been put out to stakeholders and we anticipate a final version of that in late September into October. We have established the UNESCO City of Design Ambassador Group. So this is a move to take City of Design being a a piece that Wanganui Partners manages to it being inclusive and something that Wanganui as a whole manages. So there's a represent representation there from Tamo Upako, Tupaho, uh, Council, Wanganui and Partners, um, a cultural representative in um, Bronwyn from the museum and also Michael Eden representing business. So we've started that as a transition from uh, it, City of Design being a Wanganui and Partners initiative to be an inclusive whole of Wanganui activity. Um, can't mention too much in terms of specific details, but Film Wanganui is actively pursuing some really exciting production opportunities that are going to have a massive economic benefit if we get them over the line. So we're working on that. And the progression of interpretive signage project, which is quite a significant one for us. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of inbound and outbound education, international education missions, um, including one over to Asia from a Wanganui um, delegation in a couple of months' time. I will just finish off with a couple of points. I mentioned here an economic overview. I think it's really important, and we know there are tough times out there, but we've, I've lifted out here in the report our visitor spend numbers. And in April, May, and now June, which wasn't mentioned when the, time, or, uh, when the report was written, Wanganui has been number one of 31 regional tourism organisations in tour domestic tourism spend growth. And this is not a story that other places can obviously tell. Um, nationally, the number is dropping. And so this is quite notable for our businesses at a tough time. People have choice, but their wallets are under pressure and they are bringing the wallets to Wanganui. And I think that's really important. We are seeing some of the businesses that um, struggled through COVID periods, hospitality-based businesses, the lower CBD Main Street area, it's a really successful time for those businesses as a whole. Obviously, individual businesses may not be seeing that, but across the board, some really positive numbers there, and particularly with being the winter period, helps get us through to what we'd anticipate being a, a strong summer period. Um, some people on seeing the numbers have commented, they think, oh, it must be because it's just coming off a low base. It's not actually correct. Last year was strong as well. So a really positive um, sign there. I'll just finish off with... Um, so sort of strategic side, we, um, I guess I'm just noting here that as Wanganui District Council goes through its long-term plan process, um, we're looking forward to discussions from our side with that, and um, we have a view of developing a three-year statement of intent and going through this process, and this will allow in terms of why, so it is actually from a compliance perspective required that you lay out three years of um, activity. And I think this can be a key opportunity for us to be aligned in terms of the work streams and the KPIs that Wanganui Partners is, is working to. In terms of the long-term plan process, obviously that's a process that you go through to identify the money that's allocated across a long-term period. So we see it as about being more of an opportunity to clarify um, what we're looking to achieve, on, uh, what you're looking for us to achieve on behalf of the district. So, yes, quite a few points there, obviously, but I think all pertinent and all important, and um, we'll obviously invite questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, we'll have some questions. Um, Deputy Mayor Helen, um, you had a question. Thank you. I'm, I'm sharing the microphone with Glenda, so oh, I should just be aware of that, Mr Chair, please. So yeah. we had a wee giggle over that. Who was going to push the button first? Oh. Um, so thanks very much for the report, and um, it was a great report to be reading. 
Um, the progress on the City of Design badge, has that been completed? Um, so the the ambassador group that I referred to is a really important point. Uh, we have shared the badge with um, both Tupoho and Tamopoko. Actually, we're having a meeting with Tupoho um, tomorrow in respect of it. Um, so in terms of completion, there has been, and people may well have seen this, there has been a, a design produced, but it's, it's led to a number of questions in terms of what businesses may use that, um, how do we ensure it's inclusive, but that it uh, fits with the desires of our iwi and business community. And it has created, as we've got more and more engagement, um, more discussion, more questions, which has been great in terms of level of engagement. If this is gonna be successful, we need everyone to be on board. And so what I'm anticipating is that um, I don't want to set a hard deadline on it. I need to make sure it's got the engagement of those key groups and that everyone can see themselves in it because it is for all of Wanganui as opposed to Wanganui Partners itself. Um, so I, yeah, I don't want to set a, a definitive time frame, although at the same time within our statement of intent for this year, there are certain metrics around uh, the piece of work being integrated into the overall Wanganui brand and businesses starting to adopt this as well. So obviously within this financial year, we're looking for um, for adoption and for it to be launched and out there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you've talked about the growth in domestic tourism and uh, excellent figures for this year. And you alluded to, I think, that it's that's, this is the second year of really good growth. So this is a sustainable, I'm taking this as a sustainable growth, just not something off the back of terrible weather in like Auckland and, and the East Coast? There was an element in February, March that obviously unfortunate events in Hawke's Bay saw you know, various regions get an increase. But what we've seen obviously April, May and June is that there's been a dip for almost all regions. I think only five or six got positive growth in April, May and June. And so obviously people are deciding to come to Whanganui. Taranaki, Manawatu, et cetera, cannot cannot make the same statements as us mm -hmm. and we're seeing this consistently and like I said we're seeing it, it which is great going to the businesses that may not have got it in the last two to three years those hospitality businesses mm -hmm. and the um, businesses down in the lower CBD uh, we're seeing it come from people in the wider Manawatu Wanganui region predominantly so people who probably are day trippers as opposed to staying over um, but they're, they're choosing to come here um, versus the other options that they've got so it is it is sustained um, and um, obviously we're working closely with businesses and organizations connected to businesses to, to make sure that that's what people are seeing or if a business isn't seeing it for whatever reason then obviously these people work with them as an individual business as to why they're not um, achieving that and being part of that excellent thank you very much Councillor Alexander. Thank you. Yeah, and why wouldn't people come to Whanganui, right? Yeah. yeah, it's a place to be. It is good to hear that um, that numbers are up because actually businesses are still really struggling. You know, businesses are still shutting their doors. So um, that's great news that we can um, clap our hands about that and build to, you know, to offer further support for our businesses, eh? Um, I, I just need you to explain to me, please, at the beginning of your report, just a little bit more. And I get to it. Inbound and outbound international education missions. Can you just look? Sure. So sorry, sorry, it's probably <laughs> for me. <laughs> the, yeah. the link. So I guess um, the inbound would be a, a trip from overseas. We've obviously had Nagazumi last week, for example. Okay. That's an inbound trip. Outbound is us going us going out to other places. Yeah, so we've probably been seeing, um, to this point, a lot of people coming into Whanganui, and now what we're exploring is how can we um, take Whanganui to the world. There's discussion about, uh, with Council, a uh, trip to the sister city, Toowoomba, and as I mentioned in my updates, um, there's also an education-based mission over to Asia coming up in a couple of months. Okay, so, so that falls under the tourism? International education, yep. I think. Is right. um, and can you elaborate a little more on um, under partnerships and stakeholders, w positive discussions on direction for 100% suite? So is, yep. is that taking a, a different focus? Um, so uh, 
obviously there was a large amount of funding now to WIDETS as an organization with its Mayor's Task Force for Jobs. So um, whereas previously 100% Suites has been the only initiative, if you like, in this space with youth moving to employment, education or training, there's now a couple of um, components to it, if you like. So um, with discussions, through discussions with WIDETS in terms of the funding we provide with 100% Suites, what we um, are looking for is this to move to more of a... Um, don't like the phrase, but it's been referred to as like a preventative model, um, connecting with youth at an ev even earlier stage, 12, 13, 14 year olds, as opposed to 16, 17, 18, so that they um, don't get to a point where they're completely disengaged and while they're still engaged um, within the school environment, that there are earlier options for them um, to show them a pathway to getting into education or, or training. So that's that's kind of what it means in terms of a, a, a bit of a shift in terms of strategy and focus for that, um, for that initiative. Mm, okay, that's great, thank you. So is there also um, further collaboration with our other providers as well or is it just with WEDET and 100% Suite like UCOL um, oh yeah, absolutely. You, all of those absolutely. As well. um, so there is um, what's called a, a STAG group, um, Skills and Talent Advisory Group, um, which has all the representatives, if you like, around the table from schools, training providers, and um, it's probably about 20 strong. It's really successful. It's actually not that successful in other parts of the, the country. It's really successful here. Um, we lead that, so everyone's connected with cool. the, with these initiatives. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mayor Andrew. Uh, great, thank you. And thank you, um, Gail and Jonathan, for your report. Enjoyed reading it. Uh, especially like to see all those achieved uh, against last year as well. Uh, my questions, um, I've got a few actually, but um, just for clarification. The UNESCO City have designed the Ambassador Group. Um, great, I haven't actually heard that until I read, read this, which is great. Um, what are you doing in regard to looking outside of Whanganui, for example, we've got Geelong just across the across the ditch as, as far as um, our UNESCO City of Design. Have you, are you reaching out to them to f understand what they're doing? Absolutely. So we're a part of the Creative Cities Network. Geelong, as you mentioned, um, earlier on in the year held the, um, I guess, the meeting of all creative cities. Emma, as our strategic lead for creative industries and leading the City of Design, w was there connecting with them. And that, that's what le then led to the Wuhan delegation coming over as well, so we're, we're very connected. Um, there's a lot of actually online activity because of our I guess, proximity and resource and cost, a lot of online discussion um, and presentation. So yeah, we're, we're highly connected, but um, I guess if I can bring more of that detail to the table in future, I will do in terms of the initiatives. But um, yeah, we've got a, a set of, um, I suppose, sister cities as well in that network as well that we can learn from and bring um, yeah, bring more from and I, I guess yeah we're working on at the moment how we can bring more of these groups into Whanganui as well as learning from them in terms of what they're um, what they're doing as well so yeah happy to bring more of that to the okay. table but I can assure you that we're, we're connecting to them yeah yeah because it's also um, Auckland Wellington and I think Dunedin are other creative cities yes, as well yep so um, just my, my question really is I mean uh, uh, and, and you don't need to answer it but is making sure that we're leveraging uh, the opportunities uh, both in New Zealand for other creative cities but also around the world as well and understanding what they're doing. So Yeah, we're, uh, we're v very much connected to those yep. um, domestically and, and internationally, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, visitors, I mean, it is a great news story. I mean, in saying that, we, you know, th there is, uh, I was over in Hawke's Bay recently and it's pretty, it's, it's a mess and you've got to feel for them over there and I yes. think uh, yeah. people are discovering Whanganui at the same time. But... What are, what's the, do, do we actually capture feedback? So people turn up here and they have a great experience or do we, how do we know that? Uh, uh, they're turning mm. up is one thing, mm. but actually do they go away going, wow, I didn't know, you know mm. do we get that feedback? It's a good point. Um, no, I think would be the answer. Um, we do through our eyesight obviously capture um, feedback through that, but as a, I guess as an overall destination, um, we do have a, um, a piece of work that we've had in the last 12 months or so, which is a tourism sentiment index. It's something that's done globally, um, but that's been quite early stages and doesn't get right down to that anecdotal comment type stuff you're referring to. So it does reflect what people like about coming here and um, captures all sorts of social media content and, and whatever. But yes, yeah, 
certainly something that could be explored in, in the future to to get more of that yeah sense of the experience like yeah we came but how how good was it and what can be improved yeah i mean organizations corporates measure their customer experience and i um i've just it's a question really i don't know how you do it but mm. yeah just mm. wondering so mm. uh, the other one is around uh, education missions uh and um, obviously there's internal but the external ones do we have a uh, a, a sense of um, the success of those. So we go to these, uh, th these th they have a delegation that maybe go to, I think there's one into China uh, yep, soon. Japan um, and Vietnam. Oh, yeah. Japan, is it? Uh, and do we, when we go there, um, and, and do we have, get a, a response back as to whether we have, um, an e whether it has an economic impact? Yeah. So within this year's statement of intent, we've actually got a, a direct target, if you like, of we're expecting from the activity this year to get six, and it's a relatively low number, but we're, we're starting again, if you like, 16 international students to come over as a direct result of those trips. Obviously, we're hoping for that to expand quite rapidly in the next two to three years, but yeah, that's the direct result we're expecting right. to, to okay. see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the other one is around the workforce development plan. Uh, yeah. So looking at the future for education there. So have we done a future or a work, workforce development plan of what the what sort of skills we might need yep. for the future of Wangano? Yeah, it's pretty comprehensive. The work I'm happy to share it has been shared with the um David C. E. Um yeah, it's a comprehensive situation and analysis. It's had the inputs of the founder of the um school Wanganui School of Design as well as other people. So they've they've been there and they've done it. Um, sort of thing. Yeah, it's certainly um, projecting what skills we will need in future and whether we have the tertiary provision to um, to deliver against that essentially. But yeah, happy to share the draft as yeah, well. Yeah, I'd be keen to yeah. see that. If we could share that with the yep. elected members, that'd be great. Yep. Okay, thank you. That's all from me. Thank you, Mayor Andrew. Um, Councillor Michael, you did have a light on. Uh, have you? You're okay. Okay, Councillor Philippa. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. It's a really good, great report. Um, on, um, I guess, on the tourism growth, I think you, I've kind of just flipped to an article, recent article as well, and, I, and the <coughs> comment I think you make there, Jonathan, is most of the activities of businesses in our tourism field are recreational or outdoor. And so I guess on the thing of there's been a lot of tourism growth, if I'm reading rightly, you know, a lot of stuff that happens is in our recreation sector. Um, you know, and I'm thinking to things like the Junior Hoop Nation, et cetera. But mm -hmm. I guess um, I have, it's, I, I guess otherwise I don't see a lot of commentary around the recreation sector as such, I guess, in your report. So I guess my question is um, how do we bring, you know, how do we um, boost that sector or better understand their needs and look improvements? And just a couple, I mean, obviously, you know, Junior Hoop Nation, I know you've been you know, it's been significantly involved in that mm. and aware of some of their, you know, the, their, their concerns mm. um, around facilities. And, I mean, another, you know, I think some of, in the, in the, with the Sport and Recreation Advisory Group, I mean, for example, we've just done a recent visit to our netball courts and, you know, we, we know about some issues there that can pr prevent and probably are preventing them getting certain levels of tournaments. And I hear the same in cricket. Yeah. I guess bring, you know, it would, yeah, it seems a really important sector, but not a lot in your report that in that, although I know, you, how, how do we bring all that together so council better understands how we could, uh, you know, how we can even improve that more? Yeah, I guess it's not neatly in our remit, if you like, in terms of the infrastructure, although we have highlighted certain, I guess, infrastructure deficits as far as our events are concerned. Uh, just to reiterate, in terms of referencing sectors we're focusing on, so obviously our SOI refers to four surge sectors. It refers to primary industries, advanced manufacturing, creative industries and visitor industries. Um, the visitor industries is one that um, sometimes people are, well, what, what actually is that? So that's the hospitality and accommodation businesses um, predominantly as well as those to obviously those tourism operators. Um, yes, yeah, so we don't n sort of broadly concentrate on the recreational side as you described it, but obviously it's part of our um, events funding we have highlighted some of the challenges, opportunities. Hoop Nation has already been, I've already mentioned that to this table uh, in that we um, we have secured it for another year, um, but they've been very, very clear that the um, facilities in Wanganui aren't, aren't sufficient for it to be here in the 
in the long term. So we're providing that information. We don't necessarily have the ability to do anything with that in terms of, in that example, Jubilee and Springvale um, Stadium. It may be something the council can um, take forwards uh, as an initiative because I, I know it definitely does have economic benefits. And something I didn't mention in my update is that uh, we it was a piece in the last statement of intent, but we're still working on it because of the data flowing through and it's about to be complete is an economic assessment for the events from the last 12 months and what the benefit was per per event so that you have a I guess a, an independent view um, of that I know certain events do come to the table and report they're bound to give a positive spin and we support and we understand the benefit of events broadly but we're also going to provide that to you so you've got a, uh, an objective independent view Okay, um, and I guess that, that's, so that's, a, that's a report that will be coming in the, soon or something in the next report? It hasn't quite been complete and yeah. I think realistically to bring it to the table in the, maybe the next quarter is probably too late so we may provide that to, um, to the CE and um, we can go from there. But, and just on something like the Hoop Nation, where is that filtering up to, those discussions and those issues? Because I don't know that at this stage seeing them, we're not seeing them at the council table or across the Sport and Recreation Advisory Group, for example. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I guess I have brought it to this table. I've referred to it in a previous meeting. Um, I've also referenced this with the CE as well. In terms of what happens next, it's it's not something within Wanganui Partners' control. Um, and I guess it's yeah, it's where our work kind of finishes, if you like. That we do have the event funding. We work with events. We understand the opportunities and the barriers. Um, but in terms of, we know that they are saying those facilities need improving with X, Y, Z, which we've captured from them. Um, and we can pro we can provide those, and that's where I anticipate that our our work would be would be complete. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, it's just it's just be, be great to see those Thank you. discussion I could have the CE. Yeah. And just on our last comment, a question around accommodation. Are, 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 um, are we seeing much happening around the hotel strategy? Obviously, we've had some damage to one of our hotel, you know the yeah. King's Gate or the Avenue, and. Um, is Wongian Partners still involved in, in that? Um, I'd say predominantly that the, the council itself is doing work in that space. We provided the feasibility study some time ago. Um, but yeah, that's, I guess, a, an effort largely led by the council at this point, and Wongian Partners is, is happy to come in and support um, wherever required. Are you hearing much, are you hearing, um, I guess, issues around um, in your feed, any feedback you're receiving around the tourism sector of the quality and num and, and Number and quality of combination. I think the study highlighted that we've got a capacity issue, we've got a quality issue if we are to keep growing um, beyond where we're at. And we're, we're probably benefiting at the moment from being a, in a generally quieter period, winter period, where we're getting those day trippers, as I say. But when we come back into summer, big events going on, there's definitely a leakage, as it were, from the economic perspective. I think everyone understands that. Thank you. Um, you'll notice we're quite liberal on questions and, and, and uh, comment um, and, and certainly intend to uh, carry on in that manner, but can you just please keep um, it as concise as possible uh, in the question time? So thank you. Now, Mayor Andrew, did you have a comment that you wanted to make on... Um oh, look, it's just, um, uh, just in response to the, the hotel query that... Mm. Uh, Councillor Philippa asked. I can respond to that briefly if you like, just to give a sense of. Um, yes, I'll certainly that, take that. Is that yeah. all right? Yeah. yeah so, um, uh, the Chief Executive David and Langford and I are heading to Auckland uh, this week, actually, on Friday, to talk to a number of hotel operators and uh, real estate companies that specialise in uh, hotels, um, uh, particularly four star hotels, and we've spoken to uh, a, a couple of other parties as well in recent times uh, to progress um, a four-star hotel option or options. And so it's something that we're taking very seriously and uh, and I just want to thank Wanganui Partners for, for handing over the baton for the preliminary work to, for us to carry that on. So the fact that David and I are heading off uh, this week suggests that it's something that's uh, important for uh, us and I uh, also want to say, say thank you to Deputy Mayor Helen uh, Craig as well, because uh, I know she has been pushing this for a long time. So, um, but we haven't landed anything yet. But um, uh, we're, we're we're going as hard as we can. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. 
Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, your light, um, uh, can you just put your light on there? Thank you, Helen. Yeah, okay. There's a bit of confusion with this here because it doesn't seem to be coming up. I'm Charlie. Ah. Well, Councillor Craig, who's Councillor Craig then? <laughs> oh, <laughs> We just, we just thought we'd make it really hard for you to do it. <laughs> make it difficult, all right. Um, so thank you. And um, so the resolution that um, is on the screen is that the Council Controlled Organisations Committee receive the report from Wanganui and Partners, receive the Wanganui and Partners Activity Report 1st of <coughs> July 22, 2022 to 30th of June twenty. 23. Moved by um, Deputy Mayor Helen. Is there a second to please? Councillor Peter. Uh, open for discussion. And I'll uh, Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Helen. Thank you very much. Um, Gail and Jonathan, thank you very much for your report, for being here today. Uh, I want to thank Hannah for all her hard work. Um, she was an, well, she is an inspirational leader, and we're sorry to, to lose her. Uh, but I'm sure you've got a great team and, and, and the good work will carry on. Uh, Pahi is the same, very sad to lose him, but um, also thrilled that he has, is moving on to, to greater things. And uh, I know he'll always have Wanganui's back and I'm sure we'll still um, hear from him and, and see him because he's a mover and the shaker for Wanganui. Um, I was particularly pleased on, on the bottom of page three, um, where we make the statement, as a reminder, many of Wanganui's annual economic figures were the strongest in a generation in an update provided to us in January by data provider Infometrics. You know, if, if you want to judge how we're doing in terms of Wanganui Inc. moving ahead, that's got to be the strongest indicator. And all the niggles that you might have on, 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 on one thing or another that means we're moving in the right direction as a whole body and you guys play a really integral part to that and I'll, I just want to thank you very much. Um, so it's just fantastic. Um, I know that you've got a lot of um, really good studies underway which are feeding into council and will be really effective for us. So I'm still looking forward to those including the future of education study. Um, and the three-year funding and activity agreement, I think, is vital to allow you and us to move forward in confidence rather than this lurching from year to year, which is incredibly unsatisfactory. Um, and look, I'm just, you know, the businesses out there, many of which have been supported by Wanganui and partners, the startups, just fantastic. I mean, you know, the lower Drews Avenue and the new businesses that have gone in there, which is a mix of, of, of businesses and businessmen doing, and businesswomen doing their thing, but also that, that I know some of the help that, that comes from Wanganui and Partners. You know, some of our uh, boutique breweries that have been helped from Wanganui and Partners. They're really fantastic stories and really exciting. And, um, and Wanganui is getting this really cool little vibe happening, which is, is just fantastic. So thanks very much for all the efforts. It is appreciated. And, um, and it's certainly a very positive future we're looking at. Thank you. Mayor yeah, Andrew. Uh, yeah, look, I also just want to publicly uh, say thank you to Pahia and to Hannah as well. I've done that personally. Uh, but, um, you know, there's no doubt that uh, both of them have left their mark with Whanganu and Partners, and uh, I guess that's what happens. People move on. Uh, so, uh, but we, um, you know, I'm hopeful that, um, you know, we've got the team to move forward and... Uh, and continue to make a difference and see these see this this momentum continue. So, so thank you for that. And uh, also, you know, we've talked a lot about a three-year um, statement of intent, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, building that, seeing that built up between now and uh, one July next year, uh, so that we can have a, a longer-term perspective. And I think it's going to make everyone's job better and um, or, or easier and and, uh, and more, and we can actually uh, focus on the big stuff. Um, as well, so thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ross. Thank you. Um, clearly I echo the, this, the comments made by the Mayor and the Deputy Mayor, and we all know we love this town. Um, after one year as a separate organisation in its own right, and I look at the report, and it's huge. There's all these metrics that you you to be accountable for, and 
I started counting. Achieved, 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 achieved. Then I spotted a partly and the odd not. And I thought, wow, this is one heck of a positive report. And I want to commend you because I did go through it all. Um, my questions were largely answered today. Um, Jonathan, I thank you especially because I do email you with questions and you fire back within a couple of hours. Um, and I do really appreciate that kind of support that I can ask these questions outside of a council meeting and be informed and educated so I don't waste people's time at these meetings. Gail, thank you so much for the work that you do. Um, it's great to have this kind of detail. Um, should we ask a question about something that's only partly achieved or not achieved? Clearly it's not a criticism, it's a query um, to be elaborated on and I just hope that you know the forums that I went to fairly regularly that you provide. I'm still hoping in the process of time that Wanganu and partners can find a way to, um, cause there's a lot here, to share with the public more and more about the work that you're doing on behalf of our town. So thank you very much to you and to the entire board. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, I, I just had my comments there, first of all, to um, echo what has been said about uh, the um, moving on of the two very important people at Wanganui and Partners, Pahia Turia and Hannah Middleton, and I, I'm sure it'll be just as missed around this council table as it is around your board table and amongst your staff. So um, please convey the messages uh, to them. Um, <clears throat> you know, this report today, I think, was a... Um, a, a confidence booster and I think it's been a um, testament to the work that Wanganui and Partners have put in over the last year to come up with a report that is so positive like that and, and, and in terms of how we measure up with the rest of the, the country. You know, there's, you, you hear in this, this community a lot of scepticism. What does Wanganui and Partners do? They don't understand what Wanganui and Partners do because you do so much. And it's all there in that report. And if people will take the time to read those reports like that, they'll have a much better idea how important it is to have an, act, an economic development agency like Wanganui and Partners for any uh, New Zealand community, city, major city, small city that is uh, interested in growth in their community. It's only an agency such as Wanganui and Partners that can achieve that. So thank you for the work you're putting in. Thank you. And with that, I'll move the resolution. Oh, sorry, it's moved. I'll put the resolution um, that the Council Controlled Organisations Committee received the report, Wanganui and Partners Activity Report, 1st of July 2022 to 30th of June 2023. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank you. So the next item, 5.2, is progressing the approval of Wanganui and District Holdings uh, Council Holdings Limited sourcing funds from the New Zealand Local Government Funding Agency. Uh, we have Carolyn Van Leuven and Jeff Evans. Oh. Which one's that? Chair. Just, just excuse me. What's that? What's the minutes? Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was looking at five point two off the minutes. I'm sorry about that. Um, now, uh, 5.2, Director's appointment to the port in entities. Um, welcome to the uh, table, uh, Deputy Chief, of, Chief Executive Lance Kennedy and the uh, uh, Holdings General Manager, Jeff Evans and Carolyn Van Leeuwen from uh, the uh, Holdings Board. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. So, um, do we... Um, so, this has been a... Um, 
a process that I think you're all aware of because it's a process that was approved by council. Um, the terms of the current directors are due to expire at the end of next month and so we've been through a process to find some replacement directors for the port entities. Um, we had 50 applications and six were interviewed. I wasn't involved in the interview panel but um, Jeff was an observer on that panel. Um, Declan was um, was on the panel as well and um, we, we're happy with the three preferred candidates that um, we have. They're going through their pre-employment um, checks at the moment and we're here asking you to ratify um, the appointment of the three proposed directors. So Mark Peterson who obviously is already there, um, Nick Wareham and Hayden Turoa as directors for a three-year term. Um, with Hayden's appointment to be deferred slightly will advise on um, an appointment date for Hayden once a few, we've worked through a few issues with his other roles and um, Ken Mayer we would propose to continue as an alternate for Hayden um, in the time being. Thank you. Probably the only other comment from me really was just around, you may have picked up the the subtlety there around ratifying the, the appointments for the general partner and noting the appointments for the, the OPCO. So in the option two, that might read a bit confusing, but that is correct. So you are essentially ratifying the general partner appointments. And if you do or don't, either way, you're noting the appointments for the operating company. Holdings do not require ratification through this for the operating company. So just in case you were a bit unclear about that. Okay. Hopefully I've made it clearer and not worse. And one, one more point perhaps just to make clear is the um, the remuneration for the directors. So there will be a slight saving on the REM front because we've, we're recommending that and we think it's entirely appropriate at this time in the life cycle of the port companies that the same three directors are appointed for both and that means that they will get the, um, the one salary will cover the, the both boards. Okay. So I'll we'll open it up to questions. Just the first question... Um, the term, and now you mentioned um, uh, a three-year term just then, Carolyn. I don't see that in the papers. Um, can you just um, clarify what the term is th of this appointment, what the maximum term is of the appointments? So there's, um, we're, we're proposing that they be appointed for a standard three-year term, which would mean at the end of, and we think that works in terms of the life cycle of the company, um, the, the companies, and at the point when the three years is up, that'll be about the right time to consider then staggering appointments, because the council CCO policy um, obviously has a staggering of appointments as being um, mm. the standard practice, which is, re which is good. Um, but just right now we need that stability. Um, there's um, the CCO policy um, itself is where the um, maximum term comes in. So that's two three-year terms um, two, three under year the term. CCO policy, which applies to the general partner. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Helen. Thank you. Um, I appreciate, I, I understand that that we as council, um, you don't require us to actually ratify this. This is just more a um, courtesy or something in terms of us approving uh, any appointments. For the for the general partner, we do. For the operating company, it's slightly different because it's one further step removed from council. Yeah, That's but it. we do need to. So we have an actual role here in ratifying. In ratifying the general okay. partner appointments, yes. Okay. Um, it's quite hard to put it I find that quite difficult to do that in public I have got no problem with the appointments but if we did to then hold that in a public forum do we are we, are we required to do that in a public forum in the future or is that just some it's just something that has been considered I'm just asking that in, in the comment section, so you um, in the question section, so you can have got a chance to respond, um, rather than me just leaving it to comments. Yeah, I might need David to chip in here as well. But there is a there is a we're touching on something in the public excluded section, just to provide a little bit more detail um, 
around the individuals. But um, I think we, you know, this is part of that being transparent approach. Um, there's sort of nothing to hide here, but I don't know if you've got anything to add to that, David. I'm happy to move the resolution. Uh, um, did you have a question? No. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, the resolution is on the um, screen. Do I have a mover? Councillor Flipper, seconder, Councillor Ross. I'll just open it up for comment. Um, I'll, I'll just have a brief. Okay. Yeah, look, um, thank you for this paper. Just really happy to see this. Um, these port entities has been, you know, we've recently made significant commitments to the port, you know, um, and it's going forward and financially as well on behalf of our ratepayers. So, you know, um, just really good to see, really timely to see this process um, very clear. I mean, don't like going back, but I think, you know, I mean, it's been, you know, there was a, there was a period where we did not um, know, not sitting on anyone around this table. Um, but that we had a period uh, of, of, um, of possibly of no, no directors on those bodies for a period of time that is in the public arena. And um, these are so important to what's going forward. Um, obviously have read the resumes and the uh, public excluded of these directors um, and uh, just fantastic to see it. I think they're highly skilled and capable I also think it's just really important, um, you know, to point out if it's people are listening, you know, uh, these two companies, the general partner and the port operating company, um, the directors are going to be paid one fee uh, to undertake both those companies. Uh, the chair will be paid 55000 per annum and the other two directors, if I'm reading that right, 35000 uh, And uh, Carolyn has alluded that there's a savings there. So... This is a yeah. I'm very happy to uh, move and move move these appointments, uh, and uh, that we get on with really moving along um, the whole business plan. Thank, Thank you, you. Uh, Mayor Andrew. Um, yeah, look, it's um, it's well known and noted that uh, that we're undertaking a council-controlled organisation review across all. Uh, all our CCOs and, and their entities, uh, and the outcome of that's still to be uh, um, still to be refined, and we're getting close to that. So I just want to put it out there. I mean, it does, we're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, but we, there's an opportunity uh, um, uh, that we highlighted at the start of this year to undertake that review. So I'm just really signalling that that is uh, it's, it's it's not too far away, uh, and. Um, yeah, but it's great that we've got uh, this process of the uh, director recruitment is, uh, is continuing because we need to have continuity and we need to ensure that uh, uh, we've um, yeah, we don't drop the ball on anything um, because uh, there's a, it's probably our biggest risk area from a council perspective. There are CCOs and uh, and so I um, just want to say thank you for stepping up too, uh, Carolyn. So yeah, thank you. Deputy Mayor Helen. Thank you. Um, so it's, it, thank you for the report um, and for and, uh, looking at all those reviews. Um, applicants, um, look, I, it, it is a mute point, my raising the issue of us um, giving that rubber stamp, I suppose, to these appointments. If we had any issues with the people put forward, we would raise that separately, not in a public meeting. So this is pretty much a pro forma acceptance, um, and I've certainly not got any issues. Um, I think it's just important for the public to know that there would be that scrutiny, and and if we had concerns, we'd bring it not round this table, but, but in private. So um, thank you. Um, it's a great result. Good to know that people were wanting these roles, and uh, thank you for taking them on yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comment? Uh, just a comment from myself. Yes, I'm, I'm very pleased to support 
this resolution. Um, we have been waiting for quite a period of time, and um, this port project is a very, very important one for this community. You know, it's probably one of our biggest commitments going forward. And that's very, very important that we have the people with the right skills uh, at the head of this um, port company. You know, to, to, to actually, um, uh, when you look at the um, CVs, in the brief words that are put in this uh, document, the, the agenda, um, probably doesn't do it justice. And I hope that when we um, uh, do the media comment on that, we elaborate on the skills more of these three people so that the public has some confidence going forward that these people are the right people to be appointed to these positions. Um, with that, um, I'll put the resolution. Uh, I won't read it all out. It's quite a long one. Pardon? That's too long to read out. <laughs> um, it's it's in your agenda anyway, um, so uh, you can there. So, those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank you. That's for. For not public, it's good for public. Yeah. So, 5.3. Yeah. So the next item, 5.3, is the holdings report. Carolyn and Jeff. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you. Um, I think we normally take the report as read, but I'm happily happy to do a quick kind of talk through if um, yes, I that's hope, helpful. Yes. Yeah. Um, so obviously the first um, item in our report is we've, um, like Whanganui and Partners, we've had a few changes um, around our table. So um, as you know, Simon Karipa, after a, um, after a, you know, how long how long Simon been on? Two thousand since two thousand and eighteen. So he's had five years on the um, the holdings board, and he resigned. Um, he's um, he wasn't able to carry on um, with his um, with his new job, um, so we were sad to see Simon go. And um, and then um, with effect from the beginning of this month, um, um, I've become chair, and Declan remains as a director um, the we've we've provided the a high level of our financial results to the end of um, 2023 for the financial year um, that's obviously we've we've got a revaluation report coming and the um, the year's financials are be uh, to be finalized still um, we've noted in the report um, obviously as I think um, your you're all well aware we've faced some operating challenges um, due to um, due to COVID, due to financing costs, and particularly due to um, the pilot academy um, not recovering full costs from them. Um, that's uh, something that they're working really hard on um, getting back to full strength, um, and international students are, are coming back in. So um, that's that's great to see and. Um, we're hoping that we'll continue improving. Um, so we've, uh, councils agreed the plan um, that will return holdings to the levels of profit, prof profitability that we um, are expecting. Um, that'll take some time, um, but we have got the support in place to ensure that we can do that. So we've been, um, we've been really carefully managing our costs and cash flows to minimise the support that's needed um, from ratepayers. And uh, I think it's um, it's really great to be able to report to you now that um, our um, operating position is in a much better position than we had forecast um, that w than we'd budgeted it to be. Um, so we're about um, we're just over six hundred thousand dollars ahead of where we expected to be. It still um, is 
a long way south of where we would like to be, um, but it's, it's better than we'd expected. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, so I guess essentially there's sort of four main elements to that. One is a, um, we've had a, a one-off dividend from GasNet uh, relating to a tax credit. Uh, we've had an increase in our rental and lease income from the Pilot Academy. Uh, we've had a reduction in operating expenditure, um, which has been quite significant as well, and a gain on the sale of St George's earlier in the year. So those were the, um, the primary reasons behind that variance. Um, unfortunately, our financial position means that we're not in a position um, this year to provide a dividend to council. Um, that's always that's something that we would like to turn around, but given the support that we need at the moment, um, at the moment it's, that's, um, that's not unfortunately an option. Um, the audit's underway. Um, we are going through a financial restructure in terms of the um, process to secure a debt facility with the Local Government Funding Authority. Uh, we've had a... Um, what do we want to talk um, this, the National Simulator Centre, we've got a note on that in the report as well. Um, unfortunately, um, the funds within the provi Provincial Growth Fund that were earmarked for the Simulator Centre have been redeployed, we've heard from MB in the meantime. Um, the, the original business case for the Simulator Centre was underpinned by um, ICPA, and the students there, and so we weren't in a position to be able to sort of provide the um, the certainty needed to um, to go forward for for Kanoa. But we um, we still think that there might be a case in future for a regionally based um, national simulator centre, and that's something that we would like to sort of just um, keep there um, to resurrect at an appropriate point in the future. Um, but that's it's not now. In terms of GasNet, uh, so we uh, we have been in touch with PwC about um, re-initiating discussion on updating the um, uh, the GasNet strategic options paper. But in terms of the there's, there's um, I think as you're all aware, there's a bit of um, uncertainty in the market at the moment. Um, not least because we've got a general election coming up, uh, but I'm not sure whether um, whether you'd seen that the government has recently, so la end of last week, um, produced a package of papers uh, consulting on the energy transition. So they're out for consultation, and that also includes the gas transition plan that we've been talking about for a while that's been in preparation um, between MB and um, Gas Industry Company, the co-regulator. Um, so that's that's out there, um, and the Gas Infrastructure Working Group um, have released their paper um, on um, it, it, it sort of about a month and a half ago. Uh, in addition, the Climate Change Commission's advice on the second emissions reduction plan is due later in the year. So there's a lot going on in that policy and strategy space. Um, I think it's worth just pointing out a couple of key things that um, that are sort of highlights from the gas transition plan, the draft that's out for consultation at the moment. So the minister noted in forward to that that it is almost certain that New Zealand will need a level of reliable gas supply for years to come. So gas is not dead. Um, we will need it, and that's really well acknowledged that um, it is an important fuel in the transition. Um, and then in terms of um, commercial and residential gas, which is obviously the piece that um, really concerns us with GasNet, um, given its um, position as a network business, um, there is a comment in the report that there are opportunity to use, uh, opportunities to use fuels such as biogas in the um, short um, term to lower the emissions intensity of gas used in homes, for example. So that's something that um, I think we've mentioned before, that um, one of the key things for the transition is that we'll still need, we'll still need the pipelines um, for some time. There will be gas to commercial and residential um, for some time, and it's likely that um, opportunities to, to bring 
biofuels, bi biogas into the mix and blend it with um, natural gas, which um, is also um, dubbed fossil gas in the um, gas transition plan um, that will sort of enable things to, to um, move forward in a less uh, emissions intensive way. So I think um, once there's been some feedback on those reports and government, um, whatever, whatever shape the government is going forward, um, has um, made progress with um, the energy transition and then um, an energy strategy consultation, which is likely to happen late in the year, um, uh, that would be a better time to have the workshop that we've discussed having with council in terms of the future of GasNet because um, until then uh, things are a little bit more up in the air so that's our proposal um, and I think that is probably about it in terms of a once over thank you Karen <laughs> so that's, that's good uh, I'll just ask you a question myself um, congratulations on this improved deficit that that's that's good to read and I'm I think the public will be quite pleased to read that. Just in the 23-24, you've done a budget. Yep. So can you give us an, an indication of what that budget uh, shows in terms of a deficit or a, a surplus and whether we'll be getting a um, dividend in this next financial year? So we're still working on the budget for the next financial year and there's a few large moving pieces that um, we need to work through, I think, to be able to give a better answer on that. Is that, great, yeah. that right, Jeff? Yeah. Okay. So, so um, Mike, um, does our forward projection show us receiving a dividend in this next financial year? Yeah, the 23-24 um, annual plan had a projected dividend of half a million dollars from holdings. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, when do you intend to um, report that back to Council? Thank you. Um, the intention is to come back to the next CCO committee. Um, we're currently working on the lease prices. We've got to sit down with um, the Pilot Academy and just agree on the, those new pricing structures because um, it has a major impact in terms of revenue for, uh, for holdings as well as the timing. Um, because if you recall, there was a uh, a period when um, we were holding off invoicing the yeah. Academy till about later this year. So yeah. all of once all of those numbers, we, we've got the the benefit now having the, the last meeting having had the approvals through, but we've got some certainty around the way forward. Uh, we've just got to work through the numbers, um, and it's just taking a little bit longer. Um, we want to sit down and work through it with the Pilot Academy. Um, in terms of the dividend, we did flag previously that based on the forecast it's, it's looking unlikely that there will be a dividend for this new financial year but as always that's not determined until the end of the financial year and it's something that we'll continue to review yeah thank you so and now these figures that uh, you've given us today will be compiled into an annual report i presume uh when will the annual port report be available for the public i think uh, all going well um the completion is typically around 30 September for sign-off, so it'll be post 30 September. Okay. If you recall, we've still got these um, outstanding audits to get through, um, and um, once those are completed, uh, because we can't complete this new financial, the financial year just gone until we've got the previous three years out of the way. So we're working with audit, audit are working through those at the moment. Uh, okay, thank you. Now. I've got both um, Deputy Mayor Helen and Councillor Charlie Anderson on the screen here. Now, there's a bit of confusion of who's which. I think you're. I think you're Charlie I'm Anderson. I'm Helen again. I'm Helen again. <laughs> Charlie's down there somewhere. No. No, you're, you're actually, you're actually... I'm Charlie again. We are, no, going, to, we are going to fix this because we're going to swap these around. I am Charlie again. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Councillor, um, hang on. Thank you. <laughs> oh, look, well, look no, I, don't, I don't mind in between my identity, if, identity crisis. Before we go into public excluded, we're going to attend to this. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, 
It is a bit awkward about the National Simulator Centre, right? I sort of, uh, the thinking around when we target to start building up that case again, I get it, it's got to be about student numbers, I guess, or confidence. It's, it's that balance of when we, or when you do that work. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? I think, I think from my understanding, and it's, it, was, it predates me in terms of the, the business plan and the workings, but, but the, the, the business case was based on, um, on the pipeline of students coming through from the pilot academy. At the moment, as soon as they finish their training, they go back over to India, or, or no, actually I think over to um, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, Arabia somewhere mm. like that, and do the, um, the 320 simulator training for the, for the jets. Mm. Um, so it was an attractive proposition that um, for those students, rather than going over to Saudi Arabia or wherever in the Arab states, that um, that could be a pipeline of students coming straight through. Um, in addition to that, there would have been additional students from other um, training centres in New Zealand and uh, potential options for international pilots and for, um, I don't know what the term is, but it's refresher training for pilots. They have to do certain hours over a certain period of time to, to keep up their, their skill base. Um, and of course, from, from a holdings perspective, um, it has that pipeline of students was, was terminated with COVID and constrained. So until, until, until we're in a position where we see um, that certainty and a level of confidence in the Pilot Academy as well, then we're not really in that position to really um, push this. Um, and of course, we've been dealing with with the consequential issues of that absence of pilots, um, trainees coming through as well. Um, it, it, as Carol alluded to, it's, it's, it still appears to be an attractive proposition. You just need all of the um, conditions to, 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 to satisfy that. Um, Thank you. I guess I'm, I'm, we've got a contract with um, Indigo Air again, or it's, and it's well, it's being finalised, right? So we know there's a pipeline of students coming through. We know that the airline industry is demanding more and more pilots, so there's a shortage, I understand. And and there's certainly demand for, I believe, for this um, simulator. <coughs> so so why wouldn't we move ahead now? And, and revisit the business case and get ahead of it rather than waiting, oh, you know, we've had a couple of years of the students coming through, now we can do it. I mean, I, I'm not quite there. We don't have a confirmed pipeline No, I think, I think... Sorry? We don't have a confirmed pipeline yet. We I think that there's... And, and in fact, yeah. it's not a pipeline, it's a tranche. <coughs> you know, mm. what we're looking at the moment is, is a group of students coming over, potentially. Um, there's no uh, promise of continuity. Um, in terms of those numbers, everything at the moment is looking good, but until we see the proof, until we actually see it happening, um, you know, in terms of investing, um, it would be an unwise, I think, uh, proposition, and it comes down to, to um, effective use of resources. It could be that in 12 months' time, when we've had students come through and we've got some certainty potentially of that pipeline going longer term, that things are looking a lot better and the, um, uh, those pieces that we need for the, for the, for the business case to work um, justifies basically resurrecting it. It's, it's not dead. I think it's just sitting in abeyance until, until we get some certainty. Mm. Things are looking better, but we, we actually, we're no better off right now than we were 12 months ago um, in terms of we've got a potential promise of students coming through, but they're not here yet. Um, we haven't seen a single dollar yet from that. So until we get some um, confirmation or confidence, I think um, it's just a little bit, little bit too early. Sure. Okay. Yep. okay. Thank you. Um, do you, in your, in, in your role with, as holdings, will you be making any submissions to the government on their, on their um, consultation documents on energy use, et cetera, et cetera? Is that a role you see for yourselves? Um, that's something that we will um, we'll have a chat to GasNet about. We haven't um, made any um, decision either way on that yet, but certainly we're taking a strong interest in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Thank you. Um, the biogas um, uh, discussion is is turning into a big one, right? Because a lot of uh, industries are looking at minimising their carbon footprint and are looking at biogas, including in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So potentially I can see a huge future demand, well actually in New Zealand have still got it, already got a demand for biogas, they just can't get it. Biofuel. Oh, biofuel. Bio Sorry, biogas. Bio yeah. Okay. <laughs> right, same so concept though. Yeah. Same concept, Similar so biofuel via bio uh, versus biogas. So where would you get the biogas from then? When's, what's the source of a biogas? Uh, there, are, there are different potential sources. So internationally, um, for example, bio, well, and, and in New Zealand, but to a much more limited extent, biogas is formed from waste. So um, yeah, we have biogas at, um, at tips. Mm. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a really great option. There's um, from farming as well so uh, internationally but there's uh, sorry I'm um, yeah we we can work through a bit more detail on options I mean the the challenge for New Zealand is we don't have the same sort of density of mm. um, sources as you might find in a much more mm. densely populated country um, but there are still um, some options in New Zealand that are being worked through, so it's pretty early. Yeah, I, I believe there are some options being worked through. I'm just wondering in terms <coughs> of, of you looking to the future, how involved are you getting in in either looking to perhaps invest in, in the biogas uh, production area or, or, or we're just sitting and waiting at the moment to see how things pan out or we're just too small a player to worry about it? Uh, we haven't looked at or considered that yet. Um, I guess it's it's we've only just had the um, the consultation come out in terms of the gas transition mm. plan. So um, yeah. it's it's pretty early days. Um, yeah. But okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there appears to be no further questions. You know, uh, the resolution, where has it gone? Oh, there it goes. Uh, the resolution is that the uh, Council Controlled Organisations Committee uh, received the report, Wangane District Holdings Limited Quarterly Report, uh, August 2023. Is there a seconder, please? Uh, oh, no. Councillor Glenda, I'll put the resolution. If oh, there's any further comment, Thank you. I'll put the resolution. Those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll move the motion to exclude the public now. Thank you. My intention is to take a, a, a ten minute recess, uh, have a cup of coffee. I learnt this from uh, Councillor Michael. Mm. But I'll, I'll, we'll put this resolution first. I'll, I'll move it from the chair that the public be excluded from the following parts of the proceedings of this meeting, namely items 7.1 and 8.1 listed on page 47 of the agenda and the words for Carolyn and... That'll be the next resolution. Okay. Uh, those in favour, please say aye. Against carried, and there is another resolution that Carolyn Van Leuven, Chair Wanganui District Council Holdings Limited, Jeff Evans, General Manager WDCHL, be permitted to remain at the meeting after the public has been excluded because of their knowledge of item 8.1. Wanganui District Holdings Limited Quarterly Report, August 2023. This knowledge, which will be of assistance in relation to the matter to be discussed, is relevant to that matter because of their positions within Wanganui District Council Holdings Limited. Mover, please. Councillor Ross, seconder. Deputy Mayor Helen. Any discussion? No. Those in favour, please say aye. 
against carried. Thank you. Now, we'll just have a 10-minute recess now before we start.